Hey everybody, it's John. Uh, getting a little start on the paint for the body on the base here. Um, you can see I've masked it off. Oh, sorry, I must sound funny. I have a, a mask on because I'm spray painting. Here we go. That probably sounds better. Uh, so what I'm using here um, is a lacquer made specifically for guitars. Uh, color tone. This is an aged clear. So what it'll do is give sort of that old natural look in a guitar that's been around for many, many years. Uh, and what I'm going to do is finish the back of the neck in the same color. So that natural finish will run from the back all the way around to the front. So it'll kind of look like one continuous same color natural wood. Um, so it's kind of my crazy idea for this thing. Uh, so I masked off the uh, other parts of the body, which uh, from there out is going to be a, a light blue color. Um, same company makes colors. It's called Sonic Blue. I think it's a take of a, the old uh, blue they used to do on Telecasters. So in a, in a modern style base here, kind of adding some vintage look to it as far as the colors go. So that's what we're doing there. I'm also started uh, masking off the frets on the neck. I'm gonna have to do a little bit of fret work here. I still have to get a file to file these down. Uh, not so bad up here at the top of the neck, but as you get down, um, down around here, they are a little bit scratchy. Uh, one of the things I was talking about in the beginning video here when I uh, opened this, and we were talking about the uh, the wood on the fretboards here being a little bit of rough, uh, as you could feel across here. Now, uh, the company Solo, which a big advertisement because it's right there all the time, uh, said that this was a poplar uh, fretboard. So I got to believe them. Uh, it looks just like rosewood. It does feel a little bit softer than rosewood, but uh, I'm going to treat it just the same. And really with a, any kind of fretboard like that, you want to use a, an oil. Uh, this is one I picked up from uh, Amazon. I think it was a couple dollars for the bottle. Uh, so pretty much any time you change your strings on any of your gear, uh, you want to use some of this. It'll help keep that rosewood on an older guitar or whatever they're using. That Powell Ferro, I think, is on the newer stuff. Um, it'll keep it uh, soft and moist from keep it from drying out um, but again one thing I noticed on this is there were some rough spots on the frets and what I was doing what I found online because again I'm kind of winging this too is if you get a decent metal object straight edge something like that this is a ruler that came with my uh, guitar tool kit here uh, what I was doing was just kind of taking that and just lightly dragging it through the frets there because you it's going to be next to impossible to find something decent enough to get in there and sand and still keep going with the grain you don't want to go against the grain you're just going to make this even worse uh, so by just kind of you taking this and gently pulling it towards me uh, you can see i'm getting some scrapings there of the high spots now with any wood that's got a decent amount of grain to it um, if it gets wet, whether by the finish, the uh, oils, or anything like that, or even water, uh, you will cause the grain to rise. And what you would do is sand that. And that's, anybody who does any wood finishing will say on a, on a fresh piece of wood that you're working on, you want to get that grain raised and then sand it down. Because uh, that way that it, it, you'll prevent that from ever happening again. And then you can go ahead with your commercial finishes like a spray or you know, for any kind of furniture refinishing anyway. Uh, I watched a lot of the furniture guys growing up on PBS, so uh, their shows are on YouTube, uh, and you can see a lot of these same techniques that we're applying here on these on guitar builds they used uh, for doing furniture. Uh, one of the other valuable things you can get is a tack rag. Uh, basically, it's impregnated with... Uh, uh, I don't know exactly what type of uh, 
refinishing chemical, but it makes this cloth, it's like a cheesecloth, very sticky. And so you can use that after you sand. It'll help pick stuff up. Um, or I have also keep a can of air around too to, uh, to dust that off. But what I'll do with this neck, um, uh, I didn't check these frets before I masked them off, but I did some of this already, is just continually, just kind of lightly go down with this metal straight edge and smooth out in between the frets there. And you can probably go real crazy with this and, and continu continually get wood to come off. But as long as you're feeling that that's kind of relatively smooth. And then when I, feels like they might have oiled this already, but uh, once I get the frets down a little bit, I will, uh, and, and after I finish the other side, I'll go ahead and oil these again before I put everything together and put spring, uh, strings on it. Um, but uh, as far as the, I think these were crowned. They seem pretty good on the top. I might give them a light buffing uh, with some steel wool. Once I have them masked off, it'll smooth them out too. Um, so that's that's one technique to uh, to get a neck straightened out. Uh, I'll be able to put this in a vise and then kind of work at it at an angle with uh, taking a um, file and really I don't know when I turn it this way I don't get any scrapes until I get down to the bottom these last few um, are kind of hitting my thumb a little bit of course that's the bottom gonna be the bottom of the neck the top of the neck it's really not that bad so I might not have too much work I might just slightly hit those um, but I am masking them off so I don't wreck any of the wood underneath the uh, maple on the back but that's the exciting thing we're doing here. Let me, uh, I'm going to hit this with another coat. Let me move some things around. Oh, I'm filming this by myself and working. So I'm going to put my mask back on. This is uh, nitro cellulose, which is uh, fairly toxic. You don't want to breathe it. Uh, I have a fan going. I'm in my garage. The garage door is open. So I do have some fresh air flowing through. And you want to just, the key is to make sure these are really shaken up well. Um, I'm doing very light coats. Um, I'll probably do like three, three or four light coats. I think will get me the tint that I want. You can get it darker by putting on more. If you just want a little bit, you just use lesser coats with the product like this. Uh, but you don't want to overdo it. The last thing you want is it to run. And you can see a little bit there at the bottom that uh, I had a little a bit of it run. But once I get it completely coated and then painted, I'll be putting a clear coat over that. And then I have wet dry sandpaper. I'll go over that once or twice uh, just to keep the smooth, uh, the finish uh, uniform and smooth because I'm going to have a transition. So I really got to keep track of how many coats of what I put on here. My guess is the paint probably is a lot thicker than the, the lacquer here. Uh, but, so the basic idea. Once you're shaking up, it's just a give it. Oh, here we go. Hey, see what I'm doing. Just give it a little light, even dusting there. Now, if I get a little overspray on the body, it's okay. I'm going to be covering that up anyhow. But uh, once this dries really good to touch, in I think probably about a half an hour, it'll be dry to the touch. I might let it sit overnight before I flip it over to the other side. And you can see my idea here is to kind of continue that around and then over to the back so anyway I uh, hope you guys are enjoying these videos I'm I wish I could get this done faster but uh, I gotta do all that work on the neck before I can get it finished and get the body all finished uh, putting the electronics together will be the easy part so anyway uh, thanks for watching the videos subscribe leave your comments be nice <laughs> I'm, this is my first build, so if I'm doing something funky, uh, you can let me know. Just be nice about it. Or be a jerk. I don't care. Anyway, uh, that's about it. I'm going to go practice my base. I'll practice on the one that's already put together. I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.